welcome to another video and this is my Canon 1DX which I've had for a very long time taking some fantastic pictures with it but is it finally time for me to upgrade my camera is it finally time for me to say goodbye and hang up the 1DX This is the original Canon 1DX. It's not the Mark II, it's certainly not the Mark III. And we have had some amazing experiences photographing wildlife together over the years. Now I've taken this camera to a number of different countries. I've taken it to Serbia, leading photography tours, and also when I've gone on my own. It's also been with me to Bulgaria. I've traveled with this camera to Costa Rica, which nearly broke my camera and lens. That shape that should be round is no longer quite round. I've even had it a few inches above the water working from a floating hide in Slovenia, which I kind of crashed. Oh, land. Oh. I'm glad this 1DX is waterproof, which I think it is pretty much. Back in the UK, I think I've had this in almost every kind of environment and habitat that you can think of. I've pushed it around on windswept beaches. Um, I've had it out in a torrential downpour. I've photographed with it under heavy snow. And occasionally I've managed to get it covered in sand and covered in mud as well. This camera has hardly ever missed a beat. They are built to last, they are so robust, used by a lot of wildlife photographers for many years and also sports photographers as well. This camera is best described as a workhorse. It really is quite a beast. I know this camera so well. I can find my way around it, change settings really quickly in almost any situation. Uh, I know the little nuances in the camera to get the most out of it. And it's just incredibly responsive and quick. There's no lag. As long as it's switched on, you can basically throw it up to your eye and straight away you just start shooting, no delays at all. And I don't know this camera so well that I can change some of the settings without even looking at it. I can just quickly press a button and flick a switch to change settings. Let me know in the comments below what you love about 1DX if you have one. Now in terms of image quality it really gives superb images. I really don't have any complaints about the image quality personally. I find it gives nice clean files. I could quite happily produce images up to A3 size and I have done that, produced A3 prints and I'm perfectly happy with the results. It does perform pretty well in low light. It's got a good sensor. I think the sensor sometimes is a bit underestimated on this camera, in my opinion. It's got a very, very good sensor. And I do think at higher ISOs, it works pretty well too. It's pretty capable when you're shooting at higher ISOs. So I do love this camera, but it's not gonna last forever. So that said, is it now time for me to upgrade? Personally, I'm very much of the opinion that I should not upgrade my gear unless I have a very good reason to do so. So unless it's going to make my images considerably better in terms of image quality, or it's just going to make my life easier in some way that's going to justify the cost. And I do think there's quite a few people sometimes who upgrade their camera and lens, maybe one or both, where they don't necessarily need to do that. And sometimes you can get the improvement that you're looking for simply by working on really solid technique and knowing your camera inside out. This camera still takes fantastic pictures as far as I'm concerned so why would I be thinking about upgrading? There's basically four reasons that I'm going to consider an upgrade and that's the kind of person I am that I'll actually try and write it down as much as possible to make me think more clearly and think what is it I'm actually looking for and why do I need to upgrade. It keeps things clearer in your head. The first one is the size and weight of the camera. This is quite a hefty unit. It weighs about 1.4 kilograms, which is heavier than probably most cameras you see out there these days. Now, lugging that around at times, you know, can become more of a chore. It'd certainly be nicer to have something lighter. And also in terms of traveling. So when I bought this camera, I didn't do much traveling abroad with the camera, hardly any at all. Um, Apart from the last couple of years, obviously, I'm doing a lot more traveling and it all helps when you're going abroad. And the size of it as well, in terms of packing, you know, when I'm going somewhere, just packing it down, a smaller camera would be easier. So size and weight is definitely an issue. There's also other situations where uh, maybe hand-holding is the best option. Photographing road here, for example, I much prefer hand-holding. And the situations where holding that camera and the lens, uh, the weight of it certainly makes it harder to stay in position and stay still when you're trying not to spook those animals. 
Now, number two, oh, what's number two? So apologies, somehow I managed to delete number two. I don't know how I managed that at all. Uh, number two is to do with noise. So I don't mean ISO. Uh, here I mean the actual noise that the camera makes, that my DX makes. And it is really quite noisy. It was always noisy since I bought it. They're quite well known for being pretty noisy cameras. I think it's got noisier over time. Now, obviously this is a problem at times with wildlife. There are situations where it's not too much of an issue really. If I'm photographing in parks, sometimes on nature reserves, it doesn't make too much difference really. But there's definitely situations where it can be a problem and certainly with more skittish subjects uh, that can react negatively to the shutter, that can definitely be a real issue. So upgrading to a camera with a quieter shutter or a completely silent shutter would definitely be a big help. And number three is the autofocus. Now this one, funnily enough, maybe to some people, is not the biggest priority for me. Um, it's important, but it's definitely not the biggest priority. In terms of autofocus, my camera is quite good. There's definitely situations uh, where it might let me down a little bit, but some of the newer systems, some of the newer mirrorless cameras, I think the autofocus certainly could benefit me. In certain situations, it might lock on faster, maybe in lower light, and I think particularly for moving subjects, so birds in flight, for example, uh, and some of the bird and animal eye autofocus tracking options, that may definitely help me make my life easier uh, out in the field and also might improve the percentage rate I get, the success rate I get for shooting those kind of subjects. So it's something that could definitely help me, but it's not necessarily a deal breaker. Number four is the video capability. Now, my DX does do video, I can film, I film wildlife footage with it occasionally, uh, but it's not very easy to use at all, it's not massively practical for me. So a newer camera could certainly help with the video side of things. Now I could go into that more, but I'm gonna leave that for another time. We'll talk about that probably in another video. And number five, just being completely honest and transparent about this, is that it could actually help this YouTube channel. That is the truth. So buying a new camera, uh, going to a mirrorless system, or if I changed uh, brands, for example, uh, just that alone could potentially get more viewership, more viewers, more subscribers, and just help the channel to grow. So that's definitely a consideration as well. A new mirrorless camera could definitely give me the improvements or at least some of the improvements that I'm looking for and I'm actually going to be using a mirrorless camera body uh, in the near future. So I'm going to be taking loan of a Canon R6 which I'm going to be taking with me to Serbia for a bit of bird photography. So I'm not being given it, I've got it on loan uh, for a short period of time, and I'm gonna be taking that and testing it out with the long-eared owls at the roosting site where I've been a number of times. I'm gonna be testing out the Canon R6, and I'm also gonna have a Canon RF 100 to 500 millimeter lens as well. So this is gonna be great, and I think it's gonna be good fun as well. Always is shooting the owls. But I'm gonna be testing out this camera system as much as I can. Uh, it'll be great to put it through its paces because I'll be using it in very low light. I won't be photographing with flash. I'm gonna be photographing in very low light. So I'll be able to test out its autofocus capability. Again, with low light, I'm gonna be able to test out the noise capability, how well is it gonna perform at higher ISOs. And if I can, I'll try and do a bit of a comparison, uh, if possible, between the Canon R6 and the Canon 1DX in terms of image quality and focusing capability. So look out for that video in the next couple of months, should be before Christmas. And then after using that, after I've had that experience with the R6, I'm gonna sit down and decide whether that is the right move, because I've certainly had my eye on that camera. I would love to know your thoughts on this, uh, what you think of the Canon 1DX, whether you think I'll get the improvements I'm looking for with a new mirrorless camera body. Again, if you've got a 1DX or you've had one and you loved it, then drop me a message in the comments below to let me know how much you loved it and why. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Are you kidding me?